Well, thank you, John, and, and uh, welcome to, uh, to all of you um, to our worship for the fourth Sunday of Lent, which also happens to be <clears throat> Mothering Sunday. Um, the reading set for today, if we were using it, um, contains these famous uh, groundbreaking words. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We gather then to worship God, whose love is for all and who reaches out to all to invite them to life that will last forever in his presence. We're going to start our worship with a psalm. Psalms can help us to pray when all is not as it should be and when we're maybe experiencing pain or loss or bewilderment when things are uneasy and we don't quite know which way is up and which way is down. When we want to praise God, but we're not even sure that God might be listening or when we don't know how to compose our thoughts uh, to even start to pray. Now, I believe we're not allowed technically to uh, display words of scripture on our PowerPoint slides at the moment, but that, that's OK. This is a prayer. It just happens that the words bear a close resemblance to Psalm 86. So I'm going to now share my screen and uh, read these words um, I hadn't realized that I've not been, uh, whoops. I've not even uh, shown the welcome screen to you. So there we are, welcome to worship. And you'll notice uh, Methodist way of life. We will pray daily and I will be explaining a little more about that uh, shortly. Here's some words uh, which just happen to be like Psalm 86. And I'm going to read these slowly uh, as our opening prayer. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble, I call on you, for you answer me. It's the season of Lent, and we remember the 40 days that Jesus spent uh, in the Judean desert, being tested in his faith and resolve for what was to come. Lent reminds us that Jesus was very much human. The struggles and the torment that he endured uh, were real, not just for effect. He experienced the highs and the lows, just like we do. Times of elation and times of sorrow. We're going to uh, listen to a hymn in a new uh, version, 40 Days and 40 Nights. It's, uh, it's number 236 in uh, Singing the Faith, if you want to, uh, to follow it. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Stop playing, Bob. And now Morris and Dillis are going to share with us um, some words for the first, uh, for the fourth Sunday of Lent. Thank you. This year, we do not have the Lenten cross and symbols as a visual focus, but we still remember Jesus's journey to the cross and the events that unfolded on the way as told in the Gospel of Mark. The liturgy makes links with our experience of lockdown and the pandemic. <clears throat> he was a man of sorrows, familiar with grief. He took on our pain. He carries our suffering. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the priests, elders and scribes assembled. Many gave false testimony against Jesus. They accused him of blasphemy and condemned him to death. As they beat him, Peter was below in the courtyard, warming himself. Three times, bystanders identified him as being one of Jesus' disciples. Three times, Peter denied knowing Jesus. A cock crowed twice. Peter wept. And so we pray. Jesus, victim of lies and hate, wrongly accused, beaten with words and fist, disowned by your friend. Into our culture of conspiracy theories, cyberbullying 
misleading information and false and empty claims. Speak your word of truth. Heal the wounds caused by dishonesty and help us to work together with integrity. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dillis and, and Morris. Remembering the humanity of Jesus and our own ever-present humanity, let's come in honesty before God in prayer. With a mother's heart, your love surrounds us all. In, t in good times and in tough moments, in the midst of joy and pain, you never leave us or abandon us. We come before you now, yet there have been times when we've turned away from you. Needing to be loved afresh, we seek your forgiving touch, your precious words and your healing presence. Help us to receive and to accept your love, <clears throat> knowing that it's freely offered to all. In the name of Jesus, who loves and cares without question. Amen. Today we're going to take a look at a Methodist <clears throat> way of life. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you'll be hearing more about it as Dave and John will be speaking about it in services soon. So what is Methodist way of life? Well, it takes us back to our roots. Long before there were Methodist churches, Methodist societies were built around class meetings and bands. People who discovered faith in Jesus Christ gathered in small groups, and these were places where people could learn about faith, discover the Bible for themselves, and in the company of others, pray together and support each other. And in these groups, people learned habits of prayer and confidence in reading and in understanding the Bible, and they committed themselves to action in their communities in response to what they were learning. For those new Christians, the habits they formed were a reminder as they sought to live their life like Christ. They were a compass, a way of finding a direction through difficult times and awkward decisions. They were a mirror um, that they could hold up to their own lives as they sought to be like Christ. Methodist way of life um, offers a way to rediscover these habits that were at the heart of early Methodist life and are at the heart of all um, Christian life. And as the movement grew and many others came to faith in Christ, uh, these were at the heart of who we Methodists were and at the heart of what many other Christians of many other traditions um, did as part of their walk with Jesus. Hopefully you will have seen the, uh, the commitment card um, for, for a Methodist way of life. Um, I don't know where, how it's been distributed or whether it's been distributed, but there is a commitment card. I'm just going to peel mine off my wall here, um, which I, I hope you've had an opportunity to, uh, to take a look at. And it's in four sections, uh, worship, learning and caring, uh, service and evangelism. The four sections of our calling uh, as a Methodist church that lie at the heart of our faith. And today, the first of three services um, looks at uh, worship. And we'll be looking at the first commitment on this card uh, about worship, one that forms the foundation of our life of faith. And yet one for, for many of us, I suspect, that's a real challenge. We will pray daily. I'm going to ask Dave now to bring to us our first 
reading, which is from the book of Proverbs. Thank you, Dave. I'll tell you, Dave. You can't hear me. Can now. Right. I'll get a bit close. I'll start again. Sorry for that. Proverbs chapter 8, beginning to read at verse 32. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me find life and receive favour from the Lord. But those who fail to find me harm themselves. All who hate me love death. Thank you, Dave. Well, all of us need to be listened to. Perhaps one of the hardest things uh, about this year, living in our forced isolation, um, is that so often there's been nobody to listen. Or if there is, um, they've heard it all before. We all need to express ourselves to, to, for people to know what we're thinking and experiencing has some value to someone else somewhere. We also long to listen ourselves, to hear someone else's voice. Perhaps that's why we're on our phones all the time, reading, listening, watching, tapping into the news, information, anything, far too often. We all want to be connected to know what's going on. When we talk about daily prayer, it can seem very daunting. Whatever will I pray about? What words can I use? How will I find the time? How will I keep my mind on the job? What if I fail and miss a day? It sounds maybe like a big commitment, something we must do because we know we have to. But here's the insight from Proverbs. Prayer is all about listening. Listening to God, being attentive to God's voice. Proverbs speaks of those who listen to me watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. When we, when we pray, we're watching and waiting for the comings and goings of God. Listening out for what God is doing in the world and in our lives. Waiting for what God might have to say to us right where we are. There is speaking to be done, as in any conversation, but listening comes first. And that simply requires us to be attentive. But paying attention is hard, which is why reading can set the scene for us for listening. Reading the Bible can help us to focus. The Bible is the book of God's word and God speaks to us through those words. We can hear wonderful things if we listen carefully and prayerfully. But we must allow time for God to speak. And that's where little habits of prayer help. Having a quiet place when we, where we can go to pray, perhaps lighting a candle, breathing deeply. For some, music can help us to concentrate. And we can use the words of others. There's lots of choice. There's a prayer for today, every day, on the Methodist website. There are prayer apps available for your phone. There are books, one, one by David Clowes uh, called 40 Prayers for Your Quiet Time, uh, I'm dipping into at the moment. Or simply speaking the Lord's Prayer and allowing the words to speak and other prayers to form in our thoughts as we pray. I've been doing a lot of dreaming during lockdown, and I suspect that others have as well. Normally, four or five o'clock in the morning, 
Uh, our dream lives, I think, have been very, uh, very fruitful over this last few months, uh, many of us. I've been dreaming about long walks in the wilderness, places I can't go at, at the moment. When I've done long walks across Scotland, I've carried a rucksack with all of my stuff so I can camp anywhere. There's a pattern I recognise, though, on a long walk. First part of that pattern is pain because I never get round to getting fit beforehand and the rucksack feels stupidly heavy and my shoulders ache and it all seems like a silly idea carrying a big load a long way. And then somehow my body adapts and the pain fades and for the rest of the time the rucksack somehow becomes part of me, helps me balance, even gives me momentum. But there's always that moment at the end of the day of putting the sack down, hoiking it off my back onto the ground, and the feeling of release is incredible. I feel like I could float away, and even dragging the rucksack around on the ground as I'm putting my tent up um, seems impossible. Prayer is not meant to be a burden for us. Actually, it's an unburdening. Even though I get used to carrying my rucksack, it's so good to put it down. Prayer is a gift. It's a blessing. It's an invitation to come to God as we are and to spend time in the presence of the one who loves us and longs for our well-being. Listen again to those words from Proverbs. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me find life and receive favour from the Lord. Going to ask Dave to share with us our second reading uh, for the day, which is from Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, starting to read at verse 1. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. We thank God for his word. Thank you, Dave. If that lovely passage from Proverbs was all about listening, our gospel reading surely is about asking. Perhaps there's not much more that could be said about this prayer, the one that we know as the Lord's Prayer, although it's actually a prayer for us. A short, memorable summary of what prayer is all about from the one in whose name we pray. Jesus had just been praying, Luke tells us, he often did, and his disciples uh, had observed him. Luke says little about the disciples praying, but they clearly saw how vital prayer was to Jesus and what a difference it made, and they wanted some of that too. And Jesus responds, when you pray. Clearly, they either did pray or they felt obliged to, and so he teaches them the basics of prayer. And in Luke, we get this short prayer stripped down to the basics. And at its, at its heart, right in the middle of this prayer, a simple phrase, give us each day our daily bread. Or as we say, give us today our daily bread. Food and shelter are basic human needs. Lack of food, lack of shelter are the greatest primal fears we have. We saw that at the start of the pandemic as people raided supermarket shelves for, for pasta 
and rice and toilet rolls. Uh, I was intrigued why toilet rolls were top of everyone's list. Give us our daily bread means accepting that God is the only one who can provide for our needs, whatever they are. Bread is a potent symbol of the whole range of human need, some expressed and some that we keep well hidden, even from those close to us. Here we're invited to express those needs to God clearly, unapologetically, each day laying our burden of need before God who carries us and cares for us. Concern about our daily needs makes us weary. When we're struggling to make ends meet, it's easy to get weighed down. It's no surprise that anxiety and depression are often associated with poverty and with deprivation. And so often conspire to hold people down and prevent them living their full potential. It's worse, even worse, when we live in a time when we're expected to be self-sufficient, confident, keep a smile on. A world where everyone wants to be seen as happy and confident and beautiful. There are not many grumpy pictures on Facebook. Perhaps that makes it even harder to be honest about how we really feel, to be honest with God about what our real needs are. And maybe that's why we struggle to take Jesus at his word and ask God for our daily bread. But perhaps our greatest daily need is for peace of mind, especially when our emotions have been so raw during lockdown. Each day brings its choices and each day we make our share of mistakes. And that's all about being human. And this year, there's been plenty of opportunity to turn things over in our minds and uncover past regrets and wrongs and opportunities missed and words unsaid. Some translations of the Lord's Prayer use the word debts rather than sins. Incomplete tran uh, transactions, you could say, le leading to tarnished relationships. What if each day we could unburden ourselves of all these things, the huge ones and the trivial, take them out of the rucksack and hand them over to God? Offer ourselves for God's forgiveness and be released from the wrongs of the past. Would it not be worth praying each day, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us? Apparently, Mother Teresa was once asked uh, what she said to God in prayer. She replied, I mostly listen. When the interviewer went on to ask what God said to her, she answered, he mostly listens. This kind of mutual listening is powerful. It builds a relationship. And such a relationship is built on communication that's not a chore. It's a delight. Our daily communication with the God who loves us and waits for us to speak to him becomes not just another burden, something to be fitted into a busy life. It's a daily unburdening, a time for refreshing and renewal, a time to focus on what really matters, to be renewed and refreshed for the day ahead. Amen. So let's bring the prayers of this moment before God. And there'll be pauses in this prayer. And in the pauses between my words, I invite you to bring to mind concerns that God gives you, concerns that you can pray for too. So let's pray. Loving God, as our parent, you know us and love us. You are there for us always full of compassion and grace. On this Mothering Sunday, when those in service were released to visit their mothers at home, 
We pray for those, perhaps ourselves, who long to visit and make contact with those we love. We pray for those who've been isolated for so long, denied physical contact in this year of pandemic. We pray for families who are separated due to conflict, disaster or persecution. For those struggling to sustain family life in refugee camps and in hostile places where they sought sanctuary. We seek your gentle touch on those who have had difficult experiences with a parent and in places where there is anger, bitterness and rebuke. We hold before you those struggling to bring up children alone as they juggle conflicting demands, needing patience and resilience. We pray for those who have longed to be parents and those who have suffered loss of a child. mother and father of all. You reach out in love to all your children. Be with those who need you and assure them of your love. We pray in the name of Jesus who binds us together in perfect unity. Amen. Here's a song which I'd normally include at the beginning of worship. Today it's deliberately at the end to signal our intent to come before God daily to pray and to seek his word for our lives. That the light of Christ might be seen each day in our acts of love and our deeds of faith.
I do apologise for the lack of the rest of the words there. Obviously, I needed to put 50p in the meter. Um, it was um, it was number 161 in Singing the Faith, if you want to look it up uh, afterwards, but at least it gave us a chance to listen to those uh, wonderful words. Some words of blessing. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forever. In the name of Christ. Amen. Let us resolve to listen to God daily, to follow him as we seek to live his love throughout our lives in whatever way we can. Amen. <laughs>